Welcome to Fantasy Baseball Picks and Bets here on the Mayo Media Network, presented by prizepicks.com. I'm your host, David Jones, at Tenacious D. Jones on Twitter. I'm from the FTN Network, that's FTN Daily and FTNBets.com. Head over to the website if you haven't before. Check out what we do. We have a huge group of guys and gals breaking down every slate on DraftKings for every sport that is offered, and that's just the truth. They offer a lot of stuff now. You've got eSports, you've got golf, you've got NBA, you've got MLB. Soon we'll have NFL to start breaking down over there. Uh, My boy Julio Jones is about to get traded from the Falcons. I don't love that, but I'm excited for the season. Look, you're watching us on the Mayo Media Network. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. Please smash that like button. And uh, hopefully you like the content that comes out. Hopefully it helps you win some money. That's all we're trying to do here. Talk to you about my process, and hopefully it pays off. Hopefully you win some money. I've been pretty profitable so far this year. Uh, And and in years past, I guess that's how I got the gig. Baseball is probably my favorite DFS sport to play. Such high variance, you can really take some risks. And we have a big slate to take some risks on on Friday. Huge slate, 13 gamer. Maybe some weather concerns, but we'll keep an eye on that. We saw what happened on, uh, what was it, Wednesday night, where four of the games had, two two games got rained out. One or two of the other games had delays. One started playing back at midnight. The other one stopped in Washington (sighs) in the fourth inning. That was not great. You got to fade the weather. We talk about that a lot over at FTNDaily.com, but enough about that. Let's talk about the slate on Friday and what you can do over at prizepicks.com. So if you don't know about prize picks, uh, it's betting on daily fantasy players outputs would be a good way to say it, I guess. So you're not building a lineup like you would on DraftKings, like we're about to try and do. You're looking at what they assign to each player for their fantasy output. And you say, are they going to go over or under that output? You're making a bet. It's another way to bet. And a cool thing about prizepicks.com is you can parlay those player props together. You can't do that at the local bookie. Uh, I've tried. Doesn't happen. You can parlay the uh, props, and that's a pretty big edge that DFS players and gamblers alike have right now. So go check it out. Prizepicks.com. Use that code MMN Mayo Media Network. Just the MMN part, and you will get yourself a discount and get started. So let's talk about Friday. Huge slate. I know I said we're going to take some risks on this slate, but probably not with our SP1. That wouldn't be very smart because we are going to be playing Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, is he the best pitcher in the league right now? He's in the top three. His strikeout stuff's in the top three. He's got several games, I think more than not, where he has double-digit strikeouts. I know his last two games he's only got seven strikeouts per game, but that's still pretty damn good. Garrett Cole is going to be facing the Detroit Tigers. And look, this isn't breaking news. Like, he's going to be popular, but the people that don't have him are probably going to lose their money. So that's how I'm going to play it. The Detroit Tigers are the second worst strikeout team in the league. 10.24 strikeouts per game on the season. That's second worst. I pulled up what these Detroit Tigers have done against Garrett Cole in the past. So I don't think this is a stat you're going to hear anywhere. The roster has faced Garrett Cole 78 times. In those 78 at-bats, they've struck out 41 times. And Garrett Cole is probably having his best season ever. And a lot of that was in the past, not this season. Garrett Cole should own the Detroit Tigers tomorrow. I mean, he's 11-2 on DraftKings, but I think you just got to play him. Matter of fact, I know you've got to play him. You've got... 26 other teams to find value on, you can do that. You can spend up on pitcher. If you don't spend up on pitcher, if you don't nail the pitcher, then you're going to lose your money. You have to nail the pitcher. You don't want to be the guy or girl that doesn't have the 35-plus points from Garrett Cole tomorrow because you're going to lose. Just find yourself a couple value bats, and you're going to be okay. So we're playing Garrett Cole. That's our SP1. That's pretty easy. And I don't even feel like I really need to get into why Garrett Cole's so good. I feel like everyone probably knows this. He has an ERA of 1.81 on the season. He's won six of eight games. 92 strikeouts on the season. .80 whip 
it's pretty good. He's averaging just under 30 fantasy points per game. And tomorrow seems like a ceiling game or today. Whenever you're watching this against the Detroit Tigers, we're playing Garrett Cole. That's all there is to it. Looking further down, Walker Bueller against San Fran. I don't think I want to go there. I think he might be priced too high, and I like San Francisco. People that know me at FTN Daily, I like San Francisco bats. I think they have a shot to make a playoff push. I just like them. I'm not using Bueller when I'm paying up for Garrett Cole. Ian Anderson against the Mets. That would make a lot of sense. The Mets aren't very good, but Ian Anderson is coming off a season high or his second best game of the season, and it was up against Pittsburgh. His ownership was high. His price got higher. That pushes the price higher. When you do good, you have higher ownership. Ian Anderson's too expensive. I'm not going to play Walker. Not going to play Bumgarner. Not going to play Perez, I don't think, against Miami, although you could maybe talk me into that. I looked at Sean Manaya, pretty close for Oakland here. The Los Angeles Angels, they've been struggling. Uh, look, they don't have Mike Trout, obviously, but they do have the MVP of the league, probably, in Otani. Um, we got to see what he does tonight. He probably hits another homer. That guy's good. But all you have to do it, it worrying about the, uh, about the Angels lineup is what the one through four does because the five through nine is not going to do well. They hardly ever do, and they're not going to stack points together. Look, if Otani and, and Walsh are going deep, then you're in trouble. But Sean Manaya, he might be in a good spot to succeed here. $8,500. In a pitcher's park at home, lefty against the Angels. He has a 4.17 ERA, uh, 54 Ks on the season, 1.32 whip. His home runs, you worry about a little bit if you're facing someone like Houston or Boston, which were two of his last three opponents. Houston hit one homer off him, Boston hit two. But his last opponent, opponent on the 23rd, excuse me, was the LA Angels, the same team. No one hit a homer off him. He got six Ks, seven ground balls, and one fly ball. Four hits. Look, he wasn't outstanding. His pitch count got high. He only scored 17.1 fantasy points, but he had a little bit of bad luck there with the pitch count. I think he can get over six innings pitched in this one. I think he can get the run support from Oakland to get the win, um, and I'm really I'm not worried about the Angels right now. Yes, other teams strike out more. Yes, Sean Manaya has allowed a lot of hits in two of his last three, but again, that was against Houston and against Boston. When he sees teams like Tampa, allows one hit, Baltimore four, Tampa again one, Twins zero hits, Detroit last time they played, only allowed two hits, another good reason that not really, I mean, we already know to play Cole, but everyone succeeds against the Detroit Tigers, so Sean Mania, he's not bad. I also like Ryu going up against Cleveland, I think. Cleveland does hit lefties, which Ryu is, but he's Price down on DraftKings. He's probably going to be popular. His strikeout stuff has looked good uh, in, in four of the last five. Really, four of the last four. Ground balls look good. Fly balls got away from him against Atlanta. That's fine. Yes, he'll give up a home run here and there. But, uh, I mean, Cleveland, they're hot. They're cold. Pitchers seem to have ceiling games against Cleveland as well. Um, and look, they can hit lefties. It's a little bit scary. A little bit scary just because they hit lefties, but I trust Ryu more than I trust the Cleveland bat. So I'll go there. If we want to look at Cleveland's strikeouts over the last three, they've actually been middle of the pack, striking out just under 8.5 times per game on the season. They're ranked seventh as far as strikeouts go. Uh, it's pretty even across the board, home away uh, on the season in the last three. You're worried about probably the top five hitters for Cleveland. So the, the, the hitters that would hit lefties well, I'll read them off to you here. You've got Fran Mil Reyes. You've got Jordan Luplau. Uh, Rosario's okay. Mm. As in Eddie Rosario. But eh, at the end of that lineup, you're probably not going to have too many bats you worry about. So Ryu's pretty good. Another guy that I'm looking at is actually Randy Dobnak against Kansas City, which is scary to say, but he is going to get the spot start here. Again, he got the spot start last time. Um, he went out there. Look, he's usually a pitcher in relief, but up against Cleveland, the team we just talked about, he had himself a nice game with five Ks and six inning pitch, scoring 24.5. Uh, fantasy points, and he's going to get an extension because Kenta Maeda is going to be out on the IL for 10 days with uh, injury. So he's going to get stretched out again here, or not stretched out. He's going to pitch because he's already stretched out, but he's going to get more innings than usual. He can allow home runs. He allows a few fly balls, but it's really kind of hard to tell 
what he's going to do with his limited um, pitching appearances so far this season. His ground balls compared to fly balls last game against Cleveland was 100% ground balls. 13 ground balls compared to zero fly balls. That's pretty good. He got up to 93. If we can get him over 93, which we probably can against the Kansas City Royals, uh, who in their last game, or not their last game, yeah, their last game struck out 12 times, which was the worst in the league. On the season, they've struck out 11.33 times uh, per game. So I'm, I'm not opposed to taking a shot on Dobniak. If you want to hedge it out and have a Kansas City stack, then that would make a lot of sense. But that's a cheap pitcher that I'm looking at, too. Gave you more pitchers than I usually do here. But, you know, I guess that's what we're going to do. You can also look at Jordan Lyles if you you want to take a shot in the dark. I'd prefer Dobniak, but Lyles is going up against Seattle. So that was a lot of pitchers. Uh, Garrett Cole. Riskier guys, Ryu, Manaya, Dimniak. So those are my pitchers. There you go. Um, let's talk about stacks next. Uh, the White Sox, last time I checked on Thursday night, were not going off like I would hope they would have. They had a great pitching matchup against the Orioles tonight, but tomorrow it gets even better. They get to go up against Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey is a guy that people in DFS circles know and hold dear to their hearts because he usually – pays some bills for us. He is a 6.31 ERA on the season. He's lost five of his eight starts, and he, he just gives up a ton of power and a ton of home runs. If you've been watching baseball for any extended period of time over the past few seasons, you will know this about Matt Harvey. Matt Harvey up against Washington got clobbered for five earned runs. All right. He got clobbered for five earned runs against Washington last time out. Game before that, gave up six earned runs. Game before that against the New York Mets, gave up seven earned runs. That is a whole lot of earned runs in a very short amount of time. Really crushed his ERA. You hear those numbers, you think it'd be worse. He gave up three homers in the same span over the last two games. His walks are low. His strikeouts aren't that good. Uh, but it's the hits and the earned runs. With those earned runs, so that would be, what do we got? Seven, six, and five earned runs the last three in 10.2 innings. And he's a fly ball pitcher. Uh, that's a ton. you you got to go to the Chicago White Sox here. I know they've been a little bit cold lately, but they can certainly get it together. So let's go with them. Uh, yeah, Jose Abreu in his last 121 bats, six home runs, 39 RBIs, 24 runs, hitting 330. Shouldn't have a problem with Matt Harvey. Yasmani Grandal, he should be in the lineup. His last 75 at bats, five homers. Against righties, hitting 330, and if you're into BVP, he's taken him deep once before. Uh, I believe he's seen him six times, something like that, two games, and he's hitting him for a 6-12 Woba that might regress if he doesn't hit a home run or get on base over half of the time against Matt Harvey, but he probably will, because why wouldn't he? Most people do pretty well against Matt Harvey. We've got Mercedes. He had a homer on Thursday night, five homers on the season, against righties, hitting 350. I would like to go with him. Then Juan Mancata, just for the power alone. That is your core for the Chicago White Sox. Go for it. They might throw in Jake Lamb in this lineup, too which I wouldn't hate, is a sneaky one-off, a very risky, very sneaky one-off. But let's just not get too weird. Let's play Garrett Cole, let's target Matt Harvey, and then we'll pick some other stacks out around him and some other one-off bats to you know, try and get different with. I also like the Washington Nationals as a stack, a pretty fair amount. So check out the Washington Nationals. Let's talk about some one-off bats that we would go to tomorrow. We have to wait for some of these lineups to come out, just to be honest with you, to see some of the value bats. It's the night before, but I can tell you some of the big bats that I like, and that's going to be Garcia for the Texas Rangers. Dude's been hot. Let's pull up Garcia and just talk about what he's been doing. So Garcia for the Texas Rangers. Where are you at, Mr. Garcia? Going up against Justice Sheffield. He's getting a hit in every game. I would have to scroll back until the 19th to see a game he didn't get a hit in. He's only not got a hit in two games this entire month. He's got a home run. He's got five home runs in his last five games. Okay, Five homers in his last five games. Seven homers on the season. In his last 65, or seven homers in his last 65 at-bats. Uh, against lefties, I believe. Justice Sheffield. Yeah, against lefties. Thank you. Like Justice Sheffield. Um, and he's hitting lefties for 350 so far on the season. Uh, we're going to get to 
Garcia for the Texas Rangers, who should be hitting cleanup. Max Muncy going up against Descalfani in his last four at-bats against him. He's hit him twice, 617 Woba, 750 ISO. Uh, and look, it's just a good spot against Descalfani. He's someone that you typically want to target in an important game for the Dodgers and the Giants alike. Uh, and he gives up a fair amount of home runs. His ERA looks pretty decent. His strikeout stuff is just okay, but the ground balls and fly balls go back and forth, uh, and, and he can get pretty, uh, hit pretty hard. Last time he went up against the Dodgers, in only 2.2 innings, he gave up nine hits. Uh, Max Muncy was a part of that. He, <laughs> last time against the Dodgers, I didn't even realize this, nine hits and 10 runs in 2.2 innings. So, Maybe the Dodgers are going to be popular if you're just looking at what they did to him last time. They probably should be. Max Muncy should go deep. Home run call, Max Muncy. Uh, I'll go with Geo for the Yankees as a next one-off bat going up against Casey Mize. Uh, look, I think the Yankees win tomorrow. That's probably going to be one of my bets. But Vegas, well, it's tough because Vegas thinks that they're going to win too, right? The line, if you haven't seen it yet, is Yankees. Minus 2.2 against the Detroit Tigers. We know Garrett Cole is going to do his job, but we need a little support from the bats. And Geo, uh, honestly, has not been hitting that great really at all, really this entire season. He is not getting homers, but he is putting the bat on the ball and he's getting on base. We just need him to get some of that power behind it and send one out. I think it's a breakout day for Geo of the Yankees, who will probably also be hitting cleanup too. I don't think you can take the minus 2.5 on the Yankees. That seems a little absurd, but you can parlay the Yankees' money line and stuff. I mean, that seems pretty easy. That's probably what I'm going to do if you're into uh, betting. But also check out prizepicks.com, and you can look at some of those player props. Cool. Trey Turner versus lefty and Brett Anderson's the next guy that I'm going to be looking at. Three homers were given up by Brett Anderson in his last two games, and Trey Turner is the best lefty hitter so far on the season for the Washington Nationals, even though Juan Soto missed some games. I mean, clearly he has a case for that too. But the good thing about Turner, when he gets on base, he steals bases. Uh, and look, it's Trey Turner. I think Washington's probably my second favorite stack. Going up against Brett Anderson, they're going to be playing at home, uh, and they've really been turning it on lately, too. All the bats look good there. Josh Bell, shout out to Josh Bell. He's really stepped it up. Did not think he would be playing as well as he did. He, I, he, I thought he died off in Pittsburgh for a while, but then the Nationals got rid of Rendon, brought over Bell. Bell's been doing his job. He might be playing, or it might be Ryan Zimmerman. Uh, we'll just have to see what they roll out, but either way, that whole stack, Turner, Soto, Zimmerman, or Bell, Castro, Schwarber, Harrison... Not too bad. Uh, last bat I'm going to talk about is Trey Mancini going up against Dallas Keuchel, the lefty. Mancini is the best lefty hitter for the Orioles right now, and he has been breaking out over the past couple weeks in his last 65 at-bats against lefties. He has six home runs, hitting for 440 with a 330, 340 ISO. Uh, Trey Mancini, no one ever rosters the Orioles, no one rosters Mancini. Uh, people are scared of Keuchel because of the name, but Keuchel is on the back... Uh, Back nine, I guess we'll say. He's probably around the 17. Trey Mancini, uh, go ahead and play him. I like him. Orioles have a shot in that game for sure. I think that's going to be a high-scoring game. That's going to lead me to the bets for tomorrow. I think the Chicago White Sox as my top stack, and then targeting Dallas Keuchel is going to be a good way to go. I looked at the line for the over-under on the game. I thought it was too low. It's 8.5. I think Chicago can get five, six runs, and I think the Orioles can get enough runs to cover the 8.5 too. I think that's a high-scoring game, so I'm going to take over 8.5. I already put that in myself, and it's over on ftnbets.com. Check that out and check out the other guys as well. Then I was looking at the Yankees game uh, pretty close. I mentioned uh, yeah, Yankees are going to win, but I can't take that spread of 2.5. I can't take like the minus 240 or whatever it is on the money line unless I parlay it with some other stuff I like, which I will be doing. So I'm just going to take the Tigers under 2.5 runs. Uh, Garrett Cole, too good. Yankees bullpen has been too good. Tigers have not been good. I'm not sure that they score a run. I think they go under 2.5. I don't think Garrett Cole is going going to get taken deep. And if he even if he does, I don't think guys are going to be on the bag. So, yeah, give me the Tigers under 2.5. That's it. I hope that helps. Play Garrett Cole tomorrow. 
stack some White Sox, use some of those one-off bats, go over to ftndaily.com, check out some more of the picks. Uh, we have a live stream show every day. Check out Cork Stats uh, with Big John. MLB moving averages. Give him a follow, too. Uh, he breaks down every game for every slate, except on Sundays I picked up because he's with the family over on Cork Stats Podcast. Um, good luck, everyone. I hope this helps. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go over to prizepicks.com. Try and make some money. Good luck on Friday. Thanks.